some people have not yet realized the power of MCP. Some people don't understand the magnitude of what just has happened in the drop yesterday. And some people also don't understand either the allocation of MCP or floor prices. So this is very important in my opinion that we understand what is happening in the VV app and what the effects potentially are in the future. Hey everyone, it's Patient Hodler coming at you with another outdoor video as many of you requested also in Auxier uh, that I should do more of this video. So if you enjoy these videos, these outdoor videos, then let me know by smashing up the like button right now. Uh, so I will do the more likes I get, the more outdoor videos I will do for you guys. And also subscribe to the channel, tick the little bell to always get notified when I ever upload videos, live streams. I also want to quickly thank my rare hodlers, my channel members for always supporting me here on this journey, for making it possible that I can come out here and shoot these videos for you. But with that out of the way, let's get finally started. So what has happened yesterday? Um, we had the Toki Doki drop, 20 gems, about 1000 editions total. Um, I think 888 editions, something like that was um, available of the ultra rare, 88 editions of this golden secret rare. And obviously the secret rare was the chase here. Now, um, I know that a lot of people haven't hit the uh, drop at all. I'm one of them. I thought I was really super smart uh, betting 6,000 MCP points because I figured many people will go with 5,000 uh, on the lower limit and that's it. But how was I wrong? I was so wrong because after the drop, I asked a lot of people uh, in groups um, how much they did bet and there were people missing out with 20,000 MCPs and uh, I would have been already completely out. But there were also people that were hitting the drop no matter what because of the allocation. So the first thing that we need to understand with MCP is it is not that there is a leaderboard of, across the entire drop where the highest MCPs get the first allocation and then the entire drop gets allocated to whoever puts bids of uh, MCP. No, only 40% of the drop is reserved for MCP bids and then everyone who falls out of that 40% allocation because they have not enough MCP bids in that ranking, so to say, they do a list. So for example, they say, oh, um, uh, the DGen1 uh, placed 1 million points as a bid, so he is number one and then 800k and 500k and so on down to uh, 40 something k they enter the 40 percent and then the 40 percent is closed everyone who did not bid that much is not coming into those 40 percent and is falling out of mcp bidding and is entering the remaining 60 percent of the allocation and that is the same 60 percent where you're competing with everyone else who didn't even place an mcp bid but Vivi came out now and said, okay, uh, the average um, of what has been uh, placed as a bid was 42K. So that means everyone who placed less than 40K, and I think by average they mean like this is the lower end because I know that a couple of people that placed over 20,000 MCP points were not selected to enter, um, enter the, the direct drop allocation. Everyone else below those 40k, um, if, if they hit the drop, it was because of the other 60% and not because of MCP. So that means if you placed 42 or beyond K of MCP, first of all, you did burn that to get either the ultra rare or the secret rare. But the, the second uh, point is 42k is a lot of MCP. Let's take my account as reference of an average user. And I think I'm even a little bit above an average user with over 500 collectibles. But I am getting, without Ecomi tokens, 637 points. That is 65 days of, um, of saving up MCP points if I would place a bid of 42k in order to secure this drop. Now this is Toki, this is not Pokemon. This is like Toki Doki. And there was a very small a one in 50 chance or so to hit the secret rare. But some people were going for it because, I mean, if you hit the secret rare, you can for sure count in that this collectible out of 20 gems, you would probably make 500 gems. 
or you would secure the collectible that you could otherwise not afford which is for those people who are insanely crazy about tokidoki um obviously an objective now the ultra rare is going um around floor price or a little bit uh, below for floor price so we clearly can see that people did bet the mcp points not to hold on whatever they get but to secure one of the golden versions to have a very scarce collectible this is the scarcity 88 i think it's um 80 uh, total uh, available first public mint nine so also beyond uh, the secret rare there was the possibility to secure specific mints i think the best mints would be everything sub 41 and then because just because uh, everything 41 and and sub 41 is a specific and a very special number uh, but then also the numbers um 88 888 and so on who, which are um important uh, in the in the asian uh, sorry so i think it is uh it is extremely bullish because let's talk about the effect what has happened so if people allocated something that would be in my mcp allocation as i said uh, fifth, uh, 65 days of accumulating then either I can only take part in a drop that I want assuming that these MCP levels stay on this level I can either take part every 60 day every two months in one of these drops or I have to um, increase the MCP that I get per day and increasing the MCP that I get per day how do I do that? I go to sites like vvsetlist.com and I, uh, I search for things that are valuable to hold for me and still are extremely uh, good in terms of dollar to MCP um, valuation. So for example, if I have an ultra rare comic that I as a comic collector would want to have anyways, and this gives me like a th th um, M one MCP per $3, then this is pretty good right so in in total that ultra rare would give me a couple of mcp points per day so i can increase that but for that i have to clean up the floor of several collectibles um and we live in lucky times if we want to go for mcp if we want to go for uh, drops that the floor prices are really low so today i read some comments that either one or the other doesn't make sense and I want to go into this as well. So let's assume I'm buying uh, these collectibles from the floor. They are extremely cheap. So um, I read today the comment that the floors on Vivi are trash because they are so, so cheap. Now, considering that you want to accumulate MCP points via collectibles and you want to uh, accumulate those collectibles, you should be happy that they are cheap because imagine the only affordable uh, MCP points would be like 10 or 20 dollar per MCP point it would be then obviously cheaper to load up a Komi in the app which would then drive the Omi price up but um, there is a cap of 10 million let's assume you already have the 10 million so how do you increase your MCP points you can only buy collectibles on the Vivi app and if you already have that collectible you have to find a collectible that you don't have so either you have to participate in drops or after the drop buy something off of the floor or you have to um, stack or you have to complete sets or, or collectibles that you don't have meaning you go to the market you purchase something off the floor and the floor price uh, rises or new co new sellers come in um, to sell into that market <coughs> so that can happen but then on the other hand i read um yeah mcp um mcp allocation fifty thousand points the rich get richer um yes true not no denying of that that the rich get richer because they have a mentality uh, that allows them to get richer but that's not the point of the discussion what that person wants to say is oh people that already put a lot of money in now have an advantage in securing drops well you have an advantage because you can be allocated if you put enough MCP points on the table in that 40%. Nonetheless, if you don't put these MCP points in, there's still 60% that everyone can secure even without MCP points. Sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't get it. But it's not true that you do not have a chance anymore because there are whales in the app that are putting down MCP points. Let's talk about a drop with 1000 editions, a little bit similar to Tokidoki. Of these 1,000 editions, 40% means 400 of those collectibles 
will get allocated to all of the MCP point users. Okay, so that means you have to be in the top 400 bits to secure your place to guarantee get the drop. Or you are going into the line with everyone else and you're gambling on the 600 uh, remaining collectibles of the 1000. Um, let's discard Vivi holding back things and so on for math's sake. Okay, you still have a 60% sh chance to get it even if you don't hit the MCP points. You still have the chance, even with completely without MCP points as a new user, to hit the drop. In fact, that happened yesterday at the drop. Someone who was completely new to Vivi because of that drop came into Vivi and was able to hit this drop. Okay, so um, it is definitely not true that you are in a disadvantage and the bigger the drop is, the more additions are in that 40% uh, and 60% threshold, obviously. So that means the more you climb up the ladder of, of generating MCPs, of accumulating MCPs, um, the more chances you have at a specific drop to put MCPs on the table to guarantee the drops that you want. So I wouldn't say, oh, uh, or, or I heavily disagree on this, oh, now the whales can secure the drops and everyone else is left with a dig in the hand. It's not, it's, it doesn't work like that because of the 60% um, allocation, okay? So you still can secure it even if you are a completely new user, you just go into the queue, you pay your 20 gems or whatever, and you can secure the, that collectible and you can get a secret rare out of that in the same way. But it can also happen that you are not selected. So what? That's part of the game, right? But it is extremely bullish because uh, everyone who is willing to increase their MCPs to be able to take part in more drops to secure something, they will now have to go to the market and purchase these at the moment cheap collectibles. But if enough people do that, enough people, also new users, uh, think, okay, for example, oh, bad signal, a set, one collectible, I don't have that, seven gems, okay, buy it, right? Some people don't understand that the floor price uh, it depends on normal market conditions of a dem demand and offer. So there are people willing at the moment to, buy, to sell the bad signal at seven gems. But at some point, if everyone bought at seven gems and it will not be left over at, at seven gems anymore, the floor price rises and people are only willing to sell in a profit at 10 gems, for example. Unless, obviously, uh, something's happening and everyone tries to sell their collectibles, which is not the case. We had the discussion with Secret Rare Comics. I bought a Secret Rare Comic at 25 gems. The floor was sitting then. A couple of weeks, months later, I only discovered that the floor is sitting at 75 gems. I posted about this and a person on Twitter said, no, you didn't buy at 25 gems. I posted the evidence of me buying there because just people didn't pay attention. And yes, um, the floor price rose for several reasons. First of all, no one has the transparency on hundreds of comics uh, if, a uh, if a floor suddenly jumps. So they find out after a while, so sellers cannot come in as fast as buyers are coming in. Um, secondly, uh, and, and also because of the delisting, some of the um, collectibles get delisted. But secondly, uh, some people that bought this comic at 25 gems are not willing to let go of it just because the floor rose to 70, uh, from 25 to 75 and uh, roughly 3 x um, the comic. For me, that's not a reason to list it now for sale just because I 3 x my money because I think there's way more potential in this for the bull run, okay? So uh, clearly some people don't understand how liquidity is concentrating on uh, collectibles with high scarcity. So very, very low edition sizes like these comics, somewhere between one, 125 and 600 editions. Seller exhaustion is quicker on these than on collectibles with over 5,000 editions. Okay, so th this will happen, but the effect will trickle into other collectibles with then 800, 900, 1000 after a while. We already saw it. There is a certain level of cell exhaustion in the Miles Morales, in a partner statue and so on. So it is happening. The fact of the matter is that now these MCP point games that are happening, the more important the drop and the more people missed out because they didn't place the right 
amount but don't want to miss out if something is even more important to them the more people will go to the market and buy the floor of something cheap that gives mcp points and if that happens seller exhaustion is or it's already happening because i see that people are specifically looking for maximizing mcp points so it's already happening that people are comparing what gives mcp what will hold a bit of value also in the future or even that they only buy it because of the mcp and they, they don't care if it uh, will hold value or not in the future it's still cheaper for some people to buy whatever stamp than uh, going and loading up omi in the app the, at the moment that is cheaper in the market floor prices will not stay this way because um, if this market turns around and it will at some point the market will turn around there will be more liquidity concentrating first on these uh, on these collectibles that um, that are scarce and then uh, onto the other ones at some point there will be this this bottleneck um, this this squeeze in prices and we see it already if you go to stacker and you sort the prices you see that these squeezes are happening some people are buying two to three editions from the floor and suddenly the price jumps up a couple of hundred percent you see it every week uh, there are at least 10 collectibles where the price goes up 200 to 800 or 900 percent and yes then new sellers are coming in because there are new people that are in profits they want to liquidate that collectible buy something else or buy multiple collectibles and they are not so interested in this one but at some point this will be brought up as well by other people that are interested in this collectible and a new exhaustion will come in that's the nature of how floor prices move in the beginning stages uh, of a returning market does that mean that the jam problem in the VV app is solved? No, but it means that if there's not enough offer of one collectible and liquidity concentrates on that specific collectible, the floor prices will jump hard. So be prepared for that. And if you want to take profits, um, be also prepared to, to monitor these prices closely because uh, I saw my vault just went up because of one comic my vault went up by 500 dollars in a single day because i had to look and i had to identify the comic that was in in my collection to see what really happened so uh, make sure to stay close to that if you want to uh, take profits on something and maybe buy something else that is uh, the nature of the game now overall i think that mcp is going to be very very powerful so mcp is only a means of, of securing drops but if the drops are high quality mcp is more valuable than if the drops are worthless right so the more of these drops highly desired drops come in the more mcp is valuable and the more people will spend to get mcp and the more seller exhaustion will happen in the market and the more collectibles will start pumping left and right and that will increase attention and make people come back into the app and that is ultimately what is capable of turning the market around in my opinion so you can see that i am bullish on mcp i think mcp is very powerful and i think mcp is more powerful towards vv collectibles than actually for the omi token because the omi token yes uh, it, it is capped at 10 million for gaining mcp and at the moment a lot of collectibles are cheaper to get as collectible or mcps that are cheaper to get as collectibles than with omi i hope you can follow my reasoning let me know in the comments below what you think about of this uh, about all of this and if you agree or disagree with me um, let me also know if you enjoy these outdoor videos once again and make sure to smash up the like button subscribe to the channel and tick the little bell now Wherever you are on the world, have yourself a great morning, evening, day, night or afternoon. Don't forget to go out into nature at some point as well. Don't sit in front of the screen all day. And yeah, everyone, have a good one. Bye.